like in November 2023 saying it was only 14 people in the hip hop. They got street names after them or intersections. And like I said, Tupac, Biggie, uh, Big L, Big Punt, um, a slew of artists and all that, you know, and, and, and um, um, Nipsey Hussle, you know, when he died, everybody in LA wanted that. Dolph in the deep south, but like I said, Jay Prince don't got this, Uncle Luke don't have this. So for baby them to be alive, we knew it was really important. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Man, uh, I came down here because of this guy right here, too. My boy GD is in the building. GDP as usual, man. What it do? Man, what's up, man? I just want to tell you thank you so much, first of all, for coming out here. And with the, uh, what the artist's name is that drew that great picture of Big Man, like C. Get it, baby. What, C. Ray? C. Ray. Get it, baby. C. Ray? Yeah. I just called him and told him everything that went down. But, man, let's not start right now. Okay. I got a guy here today, y'all. Listen, man. Man, the nigga addressed me on my show, man. I got a problem with it, man. He just got drafted. Stop playing, yeah. man. Yeah. David yeah. Hudson yeah. is in the building. Man, the building. Yeah. No big What's night going on? What's going on, man? Yeah. It's night boss talk. He's out here. Night boy. Man, yeah. boss talk 101. You ever seen this show before? Man, a hundred times. I have seen everybody on this show. <laughs> thank I you so much. I went back and did my homework. Yeah, man. One of the I, best. I want to tell you thank you for coming on the show today, man. So this is something that's great, man. I knew you guys was uh, really, really you know, working on, on, on getting this street. I got to know the process to what it took to get Birdman uh, uh, and, and Slim, Baby and Slim, as y'all call them down here, yeah. like to get that street named after them. How much work and dedication went into that, man? It was it was a whole lot of work, you know? It's like anything that's special or anything that's major, um, you're going to run into a lot of hiccups, you run into a lot of everything it seemed like it wasn't gonna work it looked at times it looked like it wasn't gonna happen mm -hmm. we just kept fighting kept pushing and we we weren't giving up until it happened so mm -hmm. we made it happen wow i mean you know i seen you running around down there man but i want to talk about just the process of you had a lot of lot of rappers i mean tupac is one that mm -hmm. they named the street after uh easy e mm -hmm. air yeah. right Biggie. street Biggie. i went up there and interviewed those guys as well uh and i just wanted to just like, what did it take for you guys to get to the point where you was like, man, we need to name it? Uh, uh. What I would say is, first of all, like you said, it's, it's only happened 14 times in hip hop. They did an article in Double XL like in November 2023 saying it was only 14 people in hip hop. They got street names after them or intersections. And like I said, Tupac, Biggie, uh, Big L, Big Punt, um, a slew of artists and all that, you know, and, and, and um, um, Nipsey Hussle, you know, when he died, everybody in LA wanted that. Dolph in the deep south, but like I said, Jay Prince don't got this, Uncle Luke don't have this. So for baby them to be alive, we knew it was really important. So, you know, I seen Too Short get it and E-40 and I told David, I'm like, man, look, we had got the key to the city from, and once we got the key to the city or whatever from like around February, cause that was a process and David tell you it started with the, the hip hop 50 years of that or whatever. But that's why I was like, Dave, we need to get them the key to the city and get it. Then we started doing for the street when I seen everybody else, I said, David, I told Aunt, I said, Stunner, I said, man, they ain't got this done for you or whatever. He, he like, man, maybe when I'm gone, they gonna do it for me or whatever. I'm like, no, we gonna get it done. Cause we didn't see it. I told David and then David worked close by City Hall. So then David had relationships and then David took the ball and David ran worked close by City Hall. Like what, how did you end up being close to City Hall? What, how so, does that happen? So let me give you the, the backstory. So um, I'm from the hood, from the neighborhood. So. Uh, growing up in the hood, you saw a lot of negativity. And project, yeah. You know, I grew up in the project, Night War and Desire. Uh, they tore the Desire down. I started being in the Florida, hanging with my guys in the Florida, whatever. And uh, it was so much negativity. Everybody wanted to be like the the, uh, the rappers and the hustlers, and everybody had a lot of things that they wanted to do with all the, you know, just nothing positive, right? So I said, you know what? I want to be something different because I watched all the hustlers make all this money. And as soon as they make enough money, mm. they never took the mindset and they never had nobody around them with the mindset to say, hey, look, get out there, clean your money up, start a business, do something positive. And everybody always was going to jail. Or getting killed. So, or getting killed. So going to jail, getting killed, either way they was losing all their money. So I just wanted to be somebody different. And even back in the project, I was one of the guys that was instrumental in changing a lot of guys' lives and their mindset and telling them they could be something different and showing them different. So my, 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 my um, thing was to make sure that everybody from the neighborhood have somebody, if they see somebody from the neighborhood doing something positive, then they'll give them an outlook on it. So I got straight in the political field and started working closely with 
a lot of people who was running for office and elected officials. And I was instrumental in helping a lot of the elected officials that's elected right now uh, get elected in the inner city of New Orleans, in the state of Louisiana, because I helped a lot of state representatives, the council people, uh, when you're talking about the DA, you're talking about the judges in every court, pretty much. So hmm. I was instrumental in helping a lot of these people get in position. And, uh, you know, for me, once me having a relationship with them, because that's what everything is about, relationships and resources. So when BG come home, I said, man, you know what? I'm gonna get BG a proclamation. I reached out to GD because I'm like, if anybody could get in touch with him, it'll be GD. So I called GD. I said, look, GD, I want to get a proclamation for BG. Just come home and make sure, make something happen for him. He said, man, look, I just got off the phone with, with Stunner, man. Stunner said, the city ain't never do nothing for him. I said, wait, what? Mm -hmm. I said, man, you playing? He said, nah, man. He said, man, look, give me a few minutes. I'm going to put you on the phone with Stunner. So he called me back, put me on the phone with Stunner and, and was like, look, Stunner like, yeah, enough, man. The city never did nothing for me and blah, blah, blah and everything. And I said, you know what? I use one of the juvenile lines. I'm about to change that, send that boy to the Newell. I said, man, come back home. Well, we gonna make sure you get everything you deserve. Right. So, you know, at first he was just like, man, he's just talking as one of them political type people and all this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. immediately, me and Gita hit the ground running and made a lot of these things happen. Well, wow, it's just exciting to see it, man. I, like I said, I'm I always been a big fan of, of uh, New Orleans and the music and the movement, man. For How did you, what, what made you start to think about just the hip hop side of this thing. You know what I mean? Because so, to talk about the Bee Gees, to talk about, you know, doing stuff. And for you to do that, 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 that that's a change. Cause most of the time they're into, when you get into those rooms, you're trying to figure out ways to do stuff for the city per se. But a lot of times, uh, there's a it, it's a money grab. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't want to hear the truth. Yeah, right, right. Right. Talk right. Right. it is, yeah, man. Right. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. But like I say, it's about relationships and resources. I have a relationship with the, the pretty much the entire city. I have a relationship with anybody you would want to be in contact with. I have a relationship or resource to all those different people. And I just wanted to be one of the people to bridge the gap. I've been doing it for a long time. People just didn't know who I was until G did started putting it out there. So I was just making a lot of stuff happen and just doing it behind the scenes. So a lot of stuff that you've been seeing happening in New Orleans, I was pretty much behind making a lot of it happen. But I, I want, you know, I ain't too a fan of trying to get all the glory and the recognition for me. If it needs to happen, then I'm gonna do what's best in my power to make it happen. And I'm gonna touch on that. The reason why, like I told the white before, it was so important for me to do that for him, because I remember feeling like Cinderella, like doing a lot of shit, and then people just trying to keep you in a dungeon. Like, you the one, but it's like, people don't want nobody to know you the one with the ideas and this and that. So when I seen what he was doing, and I seen how he was helping, and he was hard working, and he was like always on the phone, I'm like, damn, dude, doing all this shit, and nobody ain't really paying attention to it. Nobody ain't really like amplified him. So every chance I got, I said his name. Every chance I got, I, I don't mind sharing the ball. Cause right. I feel like I'm gonna shine regardless. So all my niggas, we shine. Just like Big Me said, we gonna all shine like new money. You shout me out all the time. I shout you out, we big each other up. Right. For real. That's what right. you really supposed to do. And I think a lot of dudes act like it's a problem when you be shouting niggas out and you be putting people on. I don't, I think that's corny. Like why people act like it's a problem to put people on, uh, shout out people that really do a great job. And he a dude that get it done. But a lot of times people don't know he behind a lot of but a lot of people be acting like it's really them. Wow. So that's why I'm gonna make sure, yeah, you so know it's him. Yeah. yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.